Hello there, my name is Joe and welcome to this episode of my indie devlog series. There's been quite a few changes and a lot of challenges to overcome since my last video, so let's get stuck into it right away. Because I knew that I'd have to get a lot done, I made sure I took some time to chill with my ferrets before getting down to business. First, I'd like to talk about changing my theme in VS Code. I found that lots of my coding is done after I'm done with work for the day, and that it's more comfortable for me when the room is quite mellow or dark. Because of this, I've settled on a theme that for me is easier on the eyes. Even though I've settled on this theme now, this was after I was halfway through the creation of this devlog, so I apologise that it might be different in some places throughout this video. I realised that with my implementation of Cinemachine in the last video, I lost the zoom functionality that I had coded in one of the earlier videos. To re-implement this, I added a Cinemachine extension, and I was able to call this in much the same way through code. Another problem that I realised was that when trying to move the character, my raycasts were able to go through my UI, meaning that when accessing and trying to use the menu, the character would be moving around in the background. To stop this, there's a small bit of code that I added to check if the raycast hits a UI element first, and if it does, it just returns out of the method. I implemented a form of highlighting interactable objects. For this, I created a new texture that I can assign to items specifically, and I gave this texture an emission colour. I can then toggle this emission whenever the mouse is over the object. I think this works for now, and I'm quite happy with this effect. I might prefer to have a proper highlighted outline at some point, but it's not a top priority for now. Something to note is that this is actually not currently working with human models. I think this is because of a difference in mesh renderer versus skinned mesh renderer, but honestly I'm not entirely sure. I thought I'd take a look at Polybrush. It's a tool that I talked about a few episodes ago. It works kind of in the same way as ProBuilder, in that it gives a bit more functionality to editing within Unity's scene view. Here you can see me trying it out a bit to create a tree canopy on the island surrounding Flagstone. This worked quite well for the trees, but I found that when I was trying to add foliage and rocks with the same method, it actually didn't look so good, so I've scrapped that for now. I've added some potions to the game. These will affect combat and be a fairly common drop from enemies. So far I've made a health potion, a speed potion, an overshield, and a strength potion. These will be limited time buffs to help you out while you're in the dungeons. Obviously, the potions didn't have any stats that they could affect, so that's what had to be done next. I was able to get a lot of good information from Bracky's RPG tutorial on this topic. My characters now have a stat system that can be used for combat, and also I've learned how to equip items in my inventory. To make testing things a little bit easier for myself, I've set up a prototype arena. You might not also be able to tell, but I've reworked the player animations in a way that I think will be more scalable as I progress with the game. In regards to combat, I've been having some issues making this feel satisfying. Right now, when you're attacking an enemy, they attack you back instantly, which feels really bad for the player. I've tried messing around with this and adding a small delay, but the damage still always goes through, it just happens a little bit later. I'm kind of stumped on how to make this feel satisfying. What I would like is for there to be a check for when the attack occurs, and if the player has moved out of the enemy's range, the attack doesn't go through. But I've not found a way to get this working through code just yet. Despite these issues, I feel like I've managed to get quite a lot done. I also spent some downtime experimenting with some PlayStation 1 style environments, mostly to try out some new Blender skills. This was honestly really rewarding and satisfying. I love how the finished product turned out, and honestly, I would love to create a game entirely in this style. In a way, I actually felt slightly demotivated because it felt a lot more rewarding to create environments entirely with my own geometry, as opposed to using assets like I'm currently doing now. I'm definitely still going to stick with my pirate game for now, but I'm really excited for whenever I try any new projects in the future. And that's about it for this week. 
It's been about a month since I've started, and it feels like I've accomplished a lot, which feels really good. I also want to thank anybody who's supported any of these videos or watched any of these videos because the feedback that I've been getting has been super encouraging. Bye for now. Peace.